I was wondering if there was a high case of racism in Australia. Hi my loves and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, hi, I'm Chini and it's so nice to have you here. Please do stay and subscribe before you leave and if it's not your first time here. Hi my darlings, what is up and welcome back. Guys, I am so sorry. <laughs> I haven't been doing this thing we call consistency, it's been, but um, in my defense, to be honest, moving has been a lot, it's a new, it's like, you know, this is like a whole new thing to me, it's like I'm in a whole new country, it's a lot of balancing I have to do, but so far, yeah, so good, <laughs> anyway, I'm so sorry about that, I haven't been consistent, please pardon me but i promise you guys once i get a hang of it i will be consistent okay and then i want to say a big thank you to you guys you guys have been amazing oh my god all of you have been amazing i've had a ton load of love okay love overflowing so far um, a lot of congratulations a lot of you guys like i have like hundreds of you guys who have joined the family i am so i'm stoked <laughs> I'm stoked. I'm so excited to have you guys here. Please stay. I hope you enjoy it. Okay, so ever since I uploaded my last video um, a month ago, I have been getting lots of questions from you guys. Some of you have the same questions to ask, and I just found myself repeating answers, and it was it was it was a lot. <laughs> so I decided to do you know an entire video dedicated to giving you guys detailed answers to your questions basically so i put up a poll on instagram as well and then asked you guys to ask me questions just in case you missed the video and you guys came through judging from all of the questions i've seen so far i think everything that i can tell you guys is going to be covered okay in this q a so stay tuned also i want to say that there is going to be something spicy <laughs> at the very end of this video or somewhere in the middle i really can't tell it depends okay on where i'm going to edit it to be so you just have to keep watching do not skip okay if not you're going to miss out on it and trust me you don't want to miss out on it okay so yes i've spoken a lot already so let's just get into the questions here all right so the first one says congratulations chini and thank you for the wonderful video i want to ask how much the package cost you did you pay your tuition with the official cbn rates and how much in naira was your pof okay so i got a lot of congratulations from you guys thank you so much <laughs> thank you so much um thank you for the wonderful video you're welcome you're always welcome okay this is excluding my flight tickets the entire package cost me a total of about six million i would say so um wait six million seven about six to seven million i'm going to be giving you guys like rough estimates just so that you can have an idea i can't tell what it's going to be for you but then um this is what it was for me okay the package cost me about six to eight million let's just be on the safe side six to eight million naira that's how much it costs me um this is excluding my flight ticket of course six to eight million naira did you pay your tuition with the official cbn rates and how much in naira was your pof okay so i didn't pay my tuition with the official cbn rates because that was going to take a lot of time can i tell you first of all you just have to take advice from your agent whatever your agent tells you do it <laughs> okay um i used an agent and see they were the best like they were literally the best i'll tell you for one my agent had my time i was so clueless when i started the whole process guys i was like i was clueless i was like a newborn child okay doing this whole thing but then my agent walked me through the whole process you know like helped me whenever i got stuck and all of that so that i just want to put it out there that my agent was like a major key to the success of my um coming to australia major major key okay so listen to your agent whatever they tell you do it okay but then for me i didn't use the official cbn rates because it was going to waste a lot of time although it is cheaper like way more budget friendly so i didn't use the official cbn rates what i did was to use fx transaction 
which involves going to buy dollar in black market okay it's more expensive but then it saves more time okay so basically buying a dollar from black market and then um, putting it into a dollar account or a domicilia okay domicilia <laughs> domicile account basically okay uh and transferring it from that account to the school that's what i did pof means proof of funds in case you didn't know that okay so how much in naira was your proof of funds so my proof of funds was about seventy thousand AUD, seventy thousand australian dollars and in naira that would be about 18 to 20 18 to 20 million naira so i don't know what the rate is like right now or what the rate would be like when you're trying to calculate it but at that time it was about 18 to 20 million naira so that's how much my proof of funds cost all right so the second question says i'm currently doing my masters in tokyo interesting and i will be done by september next year uh, I would surely like to cross to Australia, but I want to know the best possible means also what is involved. Congratulations in advance, okay, on your graduation. I wish you the best. I don't think that I am in the right position to tell you that. To be honest, I came here for my master's, but I get why you're asking the question because as you said already, you're already doing your master's in Tokyo. But to be honest, I can't tell you the other means that you could use to come to Australia. But what I can do for you is to give you details to my agency. And can I tell you, you are good to go. Like they would advise you, they would give you all the information you need to know. You could be a clueless, little bird <laughs> and they would have answers to all of your questions they would guide you through the whole process so you are good to go um also what is involved well whatever is involved your agent will tell you you just have to trust them listen to them and then you are on the right track okay the next one says hope you didn't forget our native fufu <laughs> wishing you a beautiful stay I didn't forget it too. Okay, I didn't used to eat fufu back in Nigeria actually. I don't eat fufu because it smells. But <laughs> but I miss our native food. Hey, one of the foods I miss the most is yam. Yam porridge. Oh god, I can't perceive it right now as I'm talking. I'm not even joking. I miss like yam, I miss abacha, ukwa, all these native foods. Those are actually the foods I really do miss, like the soups and all of that. I do miss them so much story for another day wishing you a beautiful stay thank you so much okay so the next one says please how do you pack your food stuff please how do you pack your food stuff did you buy your food stuff in supermarkets or you package them yourself so basically i pack them in ziploc bags that's what i used to pack my food stuff um i packed everything i came over with in ziploc bags and Oh, except two items. The ones I told you guys got seized at the airport. If you watch that video, you would know that I had two items seized at the airport. So, cut down the yam. Yeah, so yams have to have a special certificate when you bring it, fresh yam. Oh, okay. Um, and from most countries, they're not permitted anyway. It's only a few, few Pacific Island nations that are allowed to bring yams. And then the pepper wasn't packaged. The pepper's got a, a packaging issue. It's got to be packed with proper like supermarket labeling. I've had like ground pepper that I packed in a container that covers up uh, and it got seized at the airport. But then my friend's pepper that was in a Ziploc bag wasn't seized. So it wasn't appropriately packaged, basically. So if you're packing your food stuff to come over here, then you should just get a lot of Ziploc bags and just put them in Ziploc bags. It's easier that way. Also, I didn't buy them in supermarkets, no, I packaged them, everything myself, actually my mom did, my mom and my dad, <laughs> but they were packaged in um, Ziploc bags, major all of them, except the two bags of yams that got seized at the airport, I just wrapped them with like, um, what's it called? Oh wow, I can't remember, clean film! <laughs> I wrap them with cling film and then just try to like sellotape it and all of that. Oh yeah, but then one tip I'm going to give to you. See, I give you guys the tea. 
I think you guys can see if you are not subscribed to this channel right now just subscribe because I don't hide anything from you guys I tell you guys as it is okay so I'm going to tell you guys one thing that you should ensure when you're coming over here to Australia in terms of packing food stuff one thing you should do is to make sure you label all of your food stuff okay so the label should have the actual name of the food item the botanical name of the food item and then the expiry date of the items so the expiry dates could be like maybe two years from now or three years from now it's fine it doesn't really have to be you know accurate or correct so you could just use whatever um, expiry date you can just change up some things maybe like a year from now two years from now and above you know so just have the actual name, the botanical name, and the expiry dates of the products, basically. If you can get them from supermarkets, of course, carry on. It makes life easier for you to do it. And then if you want to them yourself, then just have that at the back of your mind, and then you're good to go. The next one says, did you write IELTS? I was told I have to write IELTS. If yes, how long did you need to prepare and did you write it just once? Yes, I wrote IELTS, guys. See, my story is a very funny one, okay? I wrote IELTS, I did. In fact, I had no idea that I was going to have to write IELTS. I had just roughly, like, what, a week to prepare for IELTS. And at the time when I was applying to travel, I was also doing my MIC, so I was working every single day, okay, except the weekends. So I literally didn't even have time to prepare for IELTS at all. Can I tell you guys, I prepared for IELTS on Saturday and Sunday night, and then I went to write IELTS on Monday. So I spoke to my agent the Monday prior, and then she registered me for the next Monday, and then I had just those two days to prepare, and then I went to write IELTS. Crazy! <laughs> but yeah thank god i came out successful but it was oof. wow anyway so good luck with your ielts if you haven't written it yet good luck i know you're going to do very well trust me just go there and kill it okay the next one says where are you oh sorry where you asked about any vaccinations yes i was asked about vaccinations i was asked about my covid vaccinations the yellow fever and polio vaccines in case you can't find it have to do it again so i had to do my <laughs> again so yeah was i asked for any vaccinations yes i was and it's very important so you should also have them as well they're also important for when you come over here too okay so you should have them with you don't take it for granted okay so the next one says how long did your pre-visa assessment that was conducted by your uni take? Mine is taking forever, so sorry about that. I hope by now that they would have given you a feedback. But um, how long did mine take? I am guessing you're talking about, you know, the step before I apply for my visa. So to be honest with you, there were times when I had to, you know, submit something and I was taking a lot of time to submit it. But then the moment I submit it, I get replies like immediately ASAP it was so fast okay for me so yeah um, mine was conducted in like under a week or two max and then I got a response okay so the next one says hi I'm also applying for Australia please can we talk privately yes honey we can talk privately but I'm gonna be playing with you <laughs> whatever you don't hear in this video I don't think I have answers to, to be honest, okay, um, to the best of my knowledge, but I will be able to give you the agency's details so you can contact them and get all of your answers. But of course, I'm available to talk to you privately. You can just text me, send me a DM on Instagram and I'll definitely answer you. My Instagram handle is chini00, okay, so you can text me there. I will definitely answer you. It might not be immediate but I will answer you, okay? Um, the next one says, okay, how did you process your application? I would say again, contact my agents. They will help you with everything. You, you just be a baby and do as they tell you to do. Please don't get me wrong, okay? The first things first, one thing I'll tell you is if you're processing to come to Australia, you can't apply on your own. Okay, in my time, I couldn't apply on my own. I had to apply through an agent. So I don't know what it's like right now, but then that's what it was like then. Okay, so you have to apply through an agent. Be ready to work, honey. Like, be ready to put in the work, okay? So if you're applying, don't just think, 
your personal statement is going to be written for you? No, you're going to write it yourself. Okay, but then I would give you like one thing is that my agent was the best, like literally the best. I wouldn't have had it any other way. I'm not even joking. That was, I was actually very lucky when it comes to like my whole Australia application process that I wrote personal statements more than 10 to 15 times. Mm. It was, whew, it was a lot of work, but then I never felt alone is the thing. They know what's up, they know what Australians, government or whatever, other schools are looking for. They know it because they've been in this thing for a very long time. So they have the experience. So you just have to listen to your agent, okay? But then I'm going to give you like a list of some things you should consider like have in mind that you're going to do when you want to process for Australia. So I have them written out here just in case. The documents you might need will include your international passport, of course, the one that is up to date. You have to have your IELTS test result, your original WIAC result, your degree certificate. If you don't have that, you could use your statement of results. That would work. You have to have your transcript. A must. <laughs> that is a must. Okay, your CV. That's your um, current curriculum vitae. You also have to have some reference letters, so academic reference, academic reference letters, and like work reference letter. Was it? Oh, chap. You need some reference letters, is the thing. But don't worry, nothing too difficult. Nothing you can't do. Um, you need your vaccinations, like I mentioned earlier. Nothing impossible, to be honest. Okay, so the next one says, how much was your how much was POF that you used and was it before or after paying your past tuition fee? So my proof of funds, like I said previously, was um, 70,000 Australian dollars. Converting to Naira at the time was about 18 million to 20 million Naira. Even after I paid my fees, I still had to have, that. sorry, my part tuition fee, I still had to have about 18 million to 20 million naira in the account but um i would tell you once again confirm with your agent first just so that you're not misguided but that was what it was for me okay so the next one says how long did your application take my application took roughly four months four months roughly yeah that's how long my application took how were you able to pay your past tuition fee so like I said previously, I did an FX transaction, okay, so that was how I paid it. Dollar was bought and put into a domicile account, into a dollar account, and then from that account, it was transferred directly to the school. So that is what FX transaction means. So basically going through the black market route, if you have dollar already, um, that, is a pro like, that is enough to pay your school fees in the dollar account and you just proceed and just do a transaction of course like a transfer sorry to the school's account you can do that in the bank okay i did mine in the bank so basically dollar in a dollar account go to the bank make a transfer from that account straight to the school so my battery died so i had to go charge it quickly and then come back to finish filming the video so i'm so sorry if the settings changed how can i reach you i have some questions honey you can always reach me on instagram at chini00 like i said previously i will answer your questions okay i think at this point i should say now that i haven't actually been authorized to put um the details of my agents on the screen or down in the description box okay i haven't been authorized to do that so in case you do not see their details in the description box then please do not hesitate to text me personally okay and then i would help you in the best way that i can okay so the next one says congratulations chi thank you i got a lot of that from you guys thank you so much please can you help with details of how one can relocate through study route or a legit agent hey 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 wow <laughs> i already mentioned a few things that you might need just send me a dm okay which state are you in australia i am glad a lot of nigerians are moving to australia congratulations thank you so much um i am currently in brisbane city australia how long did it take before your visa came out after applying for your visa you'll be asked to go do your Medicals are your biometrics, okay? There are requirements you need before you are given your visa. After medicals and biometrics, then the visa took about 
two to three weeks to come out. Biko, did you? <laughs> it's the Biko for me. Biko, do you get your do you get scholarship to fund your masters? If so, what is the name? Thank you. No, I didn't get a scholarship to fund my masters, so there is no name. Okay, but you're welcome. All right. So the next one says, where are you? based in Australia. I am based in Brisbane City, Australia. Are jobs available for Blacks? Yes, honey. Jobs are available for Blacks. Jobs are available for you. The only thing you have to do is to apply. Keep your fingers crossed. Be positive. Pray, if you pray, and you will get a job. Okay, so there are jobs available. Yes, there are. The next one says, I was wondering if there was a high case of racism in Australia. I don't know why this is your problem. I just feel like, you know, Minding your business is key and once you're minding your business and doing your own thing, you wouldn't experience racism. But to be honest, that should be the least of your worries. But on the brighter note, um, Australians are very nice people. They're really, really nice people here in Australia. They have like a laid back, friendly culture. They are also nice and so friendly. So far, since I have been here, um, I've had positive experiences only, no negative experience at all. The people I've come across, so nice, like super nice. So if that is your problem, honey, don't worry about that. Okay, the case of racism here is very low. Did the GTE assessments for your school take time? The GTE assessments for my school didn't take time. Once you deliver what's required of you, they're very quick to respond. This is the stage just before I was giving my confirmation of enrollment. That's the COE. That assessment took, um, it just took a couple of weeks. Just a couple of weeks. It wasn't up to a month, to be honest. Okay, so basically you're giving your offer letter, your admission offer letter, and in that letter you're asked to pay your fees as well. So you have to pay your fees and then send the telex afterwards that's basically it too. like you just wait for like a week or two weeks and then you are given a reply how do you pay your fees did you use someone that exchanges AED for naira or a telegraphic transfer from a domicile account it's the latter honey okay so i used is it the latter it's the same thing yeah, it's the both, not the latter, sorry. Changing Naira to Australian dollars and then doing a telegraphic transfer from the domicile account. You are correct. Okay, carry on, carry on. Okay, so the last one says, thank you for this vlog. You're always welcome. I'd like to know if you paid for excess luggage from Lagos and if so, how much it costs. I came from Abuja and not Lagos. Did I pay for excess luggage? No, honey, I didn't pay for excess luggage. Now this, hmm. let me tell you guys, you see that time at the beginning of the video when I said I'm going to give you guys some tea, okay? Some undercover information. This is it, okay? So if you watch the video to this point, you can thank me later. Thank me in the comment section actually because you're good to go. Alright, so I got this information luckily for me just while I was about to travel. So a friend of mine traveled just a few weeks before I did and then he was told about this prior to his trip and it worked for him. And he also traveled from Abuja. There's this thing that is called Qatar Students Club Card. So it's basically like a membership card for Qatar. It's very easy to obtain. You just have to go on the internet, okay? and just search for Qatar Student Club card, download it, fill in the information, and you have it in your phone. It's going to be in your phone as a picture, okay? I think you can take a screenshot of it. I'm not sure, I can't remember that specifically, but I use the picture format. That card gives you the privilege to so many things, including an extra 25 kg luggage. You're entitled to two 25 kg luggages each and then one hand luggage but then with the qatar students club card amongst other privileges you're given the privilege of carrying an extra 25 kg luggage do you know what that means <laughs> do you know what that means oh my god guys even in my case i was still skeptical about it like ah, i'm not sure it's gonna work it's too good to be true so i didn't even like take enough stuff for my third luggage i just had like an extra luggage but just a very small bag just in case 
okay it turns out i didn't have like important things in there in case it turned out not to be true i could just send the rest back home because i was not ready to pay for extra luggage <laughs> i wasn't but guys it worked it actually worked i took everything with me it worked okay so download the card have the card in your phone make sure you're registered show it to them at the airport tell them you're a qatar student club member okay and then they allow you to go with your extra 25 kg 25 kg 25 kg luggage and your hand luggage isn't that amazing don't sleep on it all <laughs> don't sleep on this one all right guys so we've come to the end of this video this has been nice the only thing you have to do is just to be ready have a good agent use my agents okay and then um be ready to listen to your agents and do whatever they ask you to do and lastly ask questions <laughs> ask questions okay that you're paying to be guided and trust me you are good to go before we come to the end of the video guys i have exciting news for you all okay so i was permitted to let you guys know that if you use my agency you're going to be getting a 10 percent discount from your consultation fee wow that is a lot of money to be saved you guys so um head over to my instagram just send me a dm right now if you're ready and then i'll definitely give you details to the agency you can feel free to contact them whenever you're ready and have your 10 percent discount all you need to do is to let them know you are from my youtube channel so you're from chini okoye's youtube channel and then you have a 10 percent discount off your consultation fee that is amazing trust me i wish i had that <laughs> So that's it you guys this brings us to the end of the video thank you so much for watching i love you all so much and i can't wait to see you all in the next one bye Mwah. guys is done like this bye guys Mwah. <laughs>